Okay, we're gonna we're gonna jump into part of the part of the program. We're we're talking about about feeds and, and feeders, and part of you know what makes a what makes a good feeder. What you should be looking for, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to build one yourself or you're gonna buy one. There's there's a lot that goes into it. You know, we started out, you know, I don't know how many years ago, we had to build our own feeders. And, you know, we started out with something real simple like this because all the fancy feeders that you see out there and you can buy now, they weren't available. Nobody was making them. Okay, so we started out with something real simple like this, you know, a little trough, put a little roof over it, and worked really good. I mean, deer accepted it and ate out of that very, very readily. But what, can you, what is wrong with that feeder? Yeah. I mean, every, everything that eats, I think, eats deer feed. And then and it, they have full access to, to a feeder like this. You get a blowing rain, you know, feed, your feed gets wet. Uh, unless you build a really big trough, you know, you can't put a lot of feed in there. You, know, you put a bag or two in there, and you've got to come back every day or every other day. You've got to have a lot of time. You've you got to put feed in there. And so, we, so what a lot of people come up with is, is a, a bigger, more resilient, uh, kind of feeder that keeps your feed dry and, and, and provides it to the deer on, on a ready basis. This is one of the first ones that that tube type feeder uh, that that got on the market. And I, I don't I don't think they're even still in business anymore. But they, when they first made this one, brought it out to us to test and I looked at it, we just just giggled. They said there ain't no way a deer is going to walk up there and stick his nose in a hole and eat. But we were wrong. It did. You can get them to do it. Uh, but that, that was one of the first ones out there. It had, it has, it has some problems. Uh, but we, we were working with uh, Boss Buck Feeder the last couple of years. You know, they came to us and said, okay, can you help us design our feeder better and make it the best deer feeder that there is out there, okay? So we had some, we had some ideas that we, we wanted to incorporate in his design, and to his credit, he did. And he went back and redesigned his feeder to make it, you know, one of the best deer feeders available. You know, it's got a, a weather tight uh, place to store your feed. There's no way moisture can get in there. Keeps it dry, keeps it clean, uh, feeds it all out. Deer, if easy access to it. And, what, and, what, and one of the things is the shape of the spout that, that you use on, or see on those feeders. And you see all kinds of shapes out there. You see squares and rectangles and ovals and circles. The best one is a circle, right? And it doesn't need to be bigger than four inches round. And so, and we worked with another, one, another deer feeder uh, some time past, and they had, a, they had a nice round four inch diameter spout on their, on their feeder. And they talked to somebody else, and, and they talked them into, go, what you really need is a, is a big old spout on there, okay? So the deer can just stick his head in there and really get, get to go to town on it. So they built one of those and, and asked, us, asked us to try it. And what I did, they had, they had four spouts on, on the feeder, and I put two of the old spouts on the feeder on, on opposite sides, put two of the new spouts on the feeder on opposite sides, put a camera on it and let the deer tell us what they liked. And they ate more and spent more time on the four inch round spout than the big, the big spout. Why do you think that would be? I, mean, I, I got my ideas, so I don't have any way to prove this, but. You know, if you, the deer would, would stick his face in those, those big spouts and eat, but what happens when they do? It covers up their face, like right here. They can't see. They don't, deer don't like to be able to not see what's around them, see what other deer are doing, or see if there's a booger trying to sneak up behind them and eat them. You know, they like to where they can stick their mouth in there and eat, but they can also keep their eyes out, out in the open. And I think that's, that's why that worked better. And you have to worry about you know, hard edges, sharp edges on, on feeders. Uh, you can damage those antlers this time of year. You can see what happened to this little buck. He, 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 bumped, he bumped his antler on that, on that feeder a couple of days before, and that whole side's broken off now. You know, so he, he was damaged for that whole year. And you've got to be careful about making sure that all the feed comes out of those feeders. You see a problem here on this one? It was, it was got that little lip under there to put those legs on it, it made it very strong, very sturdy, but, but that little lip holds a bunch of feed. It will never come out of there. When it stays up in there, that feed gets old, it gets dry, over time it gets moldy, and that's not good for deer. Okay? Now, 
So a, a good design is where all the feed comes out. We designed this boss buck feeder. When, when it empties, there's not a pellet left. It is empty. Okay, when it's gone, it's gone. This one, this other one had another problem. See where the, where the spouts come out of the, out of the deal. It had that little square box down there at the bottom. Feed hung up there. Got old, got dry, got moldy. You know, you have to go in there every, every so often and clean all that nasty stuff out of there. And it gets nasty and smelly bad. So that's you know things you gotta you gotta think about and worry about, and these it, feeders need to be able to breathe. You know those little 55 gallon barrels. We got those little tight bands that you ratchet around the top of them, supposed to keep keep them dry in there. Those are the worst kinds. Because those feed got a little bit of little bit of moisture in it. There's moisture in the air around it, and that stays in there. It can't get out. And over time, if, you, if those feeders aren't being emptied regularly, very quickly, it, the feed starts molding in those, okay? So you need a feed where you can, a lid where you can keep the rain out, but it gotta, it's gotta be able to breathe and let, let air in and out of there, keep that air dry, okay? That's the things you wanna think about. And what about this problem? Anybody got this? Good Lord, I, I mean, I, I'd hate to know how many coons are really out there. It probably just, it probably scare us all. There's a lot of them. And they're a big problem. They eat, they eat a lot of deer feed. And sometimes you may have, unless you've got a deer that, that's like this. <laughs> and that's a good deer. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of, a lot of deer aren't that, aren't that bold. And you get a bunch of coons that, that huddle up under your feeder, they can keep other deer away, from, keep them backed off. And they won't be able to eat until the coons are full and leave. Okay? So we want to keep, we want to keep coons away from there. We want to be able to... Uh, Another, another thing is, is have enough space where the, those deer can get their antlers in there without bumping into stuff. So we designed that feeder. We said spread his legs out on that feeder real wide so we, we could put some pretty big deer in there. And they can swing their head and turn around and look and not worry about bumping onto it. And the height of the, of the spout off, off the ground. It needs to be 40 inches. 42 is not too much, but don't go any higher than that. Okay. But if you get it at least 40 inches off the ground, you, don't, you eliminate these guys. They can't reach it. And by spreading those legs out like we did, there's not, they can't reach from the legs to the spout. They're not getting it, okay? So the only time they get anything out of this feeder is what deer spill on the ground, which shouldn't be very much. Okay. And if you got, you got cows, you got hogs, you got whatever, you know, hogs will go up there and just start bumping your feeder and start knocking, knocking feed out on the ground until it's empty. Well, he, Tom designed this, this, this foot that goes on a feeder. Instead of having to go out there and drive T-posts in the ground and try to wire them up to your legs, keep them, keep them tied, uh, tied down, which is a dangerous situation. I mean, there's a guy I heard about last year was filling his feeder, slipped off the ladder, and fell on the T-post. You know, they found him a couple days later. You know, it's, not, it's not a good situation. This, this, deal here, you could use a, a piece of a T-post. You could take one T-post and, and anchor down all four, all four legs of your feeder, okay? Just a short piece of it. Drive it in the ground, it bolts onto the, the T-post, bolts onto the leg, and, and it, it can't move. And you don't have that big T-post sticking, sticking up out there in the way. And it's the easy access by the deer. It's got it's got the angle angle spouts on it. It keeps it keeps moisture out of it when it rains.